we're going to take a look at another index that we can use to monitor our project progress. That is SPI, or Scheduling Performance Index. It measures our scheduling efficiency, or how fast we're getting our project completed. SPI is calculated as the earned value divided by the plan value. However, I will mention that since we are going to be using money to measure time, in this case using our earned value metrics, which are expressed in terms of dollars, in order to measure our schedule, which is usually expressed in days or weeks or months, there will be a caveat in that we need to make sure that we're using this when particular tasks or parts of our project are underway rather than when they're completed. We'll talk about that in a bit, but it's the same sort of warning that came up when we were talking about scheduling variance. Now we interpret this index very much the same way as we did with CPI. If we have a value that is less than 1, we say that we are behind schedule. If we have a value of 1, we say that we're on schedule. And if we have a value greater than 1, we say that we are ahead of schedule. Let's take a look at the calculation of SPI. Here I have an activity, and its total plan value is $24,000. However, by this particular point in time, by today, I was anticipating to have spent $16,000 on this. That's my budgeted uh, amount for the work that was scheduled, or we would say plan value by today, was $16,000. That's important because we're looking at this from the standpoint of schedule. So now let's calculate the earned value. The earned value is calculated the same way we did before. Let's say that we have 50% of this particular task is done. So we're going to take the total plan value times 50% and get $12,000. Then we're going to compare that $12,000 to the plan value by this particular point in time. So we're going to take $12,000 divided by $16,000 and we come up with a scheduling performance index of 0 0.75. 0 0.75 on our scale is indicating that we are in fact behind schedule. Another way to think of this is to think about the money that we're using on our project. And we can say that if we have an SPI of 0 0.75 that for every dollar that we put into our project, in terms of schedule, we're only getting 75 cents worth of value. Let's look at another example. Once again, we have this total plan value of 24,000, a plan value by today of 16,000. However, in this case, our activity has gone much better than planned, so we have 83.33% of that activity is complete. So our earned value is 24,000 times 83.33% and we get $20,000. We do the division here of 20,000 divided by 16,000 we get an SPI of 1.25. 1.25 on our scale tells us that we are in fact ahead of schedule or another way to look at this is that for every dollar that we put into our project in terms of scheduling value we are getting a dollar twenty-five out. Now as I said we need to be careful when we're interpreting uh, SPI because we are using money to measure time. Let's take a look at where that can come into play or where that can cause a problem. Let's say that we have a particular task. We have this plan value of 24,000. And uh, the plan value by today was 24,000. We had expected to have this done by now. However, we're only 75% done. So we have a 
earned value of $18,000. Now even if we are 18 months late, we're still going to have a SPI of 0.75. That certainly indicates that we are behind schedule. But let's look at it uh, and say that we have gone ahead and we have gotten it done. We finally got it done 18 months later. Well, our SPI is now one, indicating that we are in fact on schedule. When we are not, we know that we are 18 months late in getting this particular activity done. This is just part of the uh, artifact of the fact that we're trying to use money to judge our schedule. So while SPI can be useful, most project managers don't rely on it very heavily because of this particular aspect of it. We're going to look instead at milestones, at our estimated start dates and finish dates and our actual start dates and finish dates and try to make interpretations of our schedule from that. However, it can be useful when we particularly have a large number of tasks that are currently in progress. So SPI, once again, should just be used or really considered when we're looking at those activities that are in process or currently being worked on. Hopefully this provides you with a good overview of what SPI can do for us.